I'm your chair talk host Nemanja and this is retrospective from the last week episode that we recorded with Stefan Kostić from Ipification. Digital identity is becoming, uh, I, I think, the center of, of any business, not only online business, right? We are talking about that uh, if you are not going digital, uh, most probably you are not going to exist in, in, in just few years, uh, a few years from now. When we talk about, you know, confirming digital identity uh, online, we are always talking about uh, one of the three, three factors. And that's you know known in the industry as something you know, something you are, and something you have. Yeah, I, I, I like to say what, what defines the future is not a technology, but actually dreams behind the technology. And, and I'm going to quote you on this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Th- thanks a lot. I mean, our, our vision of the future, you know, when it comes to digital identity is that uh, you know, user security, mobile user security should not be compromised over simplicity of use and their privacy. This is Chair, place where we discuss innovations. Theory of disruption first was spelled out in 1997 book uh, from the Harvard Business School professor. And from that point, most of the time when somebody is uh, creating new product, it doesn't matter if it's uh, digital or not digital, they're going for that disruption. But with that, usually some basic stuff, basic things can be uh, overseen and left behind and that can generate pro- problems later. So on this subject, I have a very interesting guest, Miloš Zikic, CEO of Spice Factory. Uh, Miloš is an experienced software engineer and he works in so many different products in industries such as telco, uh, health, automotive, uh, automotive uh, end user. Uh, uh, yeah. for example, and uh, uh, your specialties are product development, project management, scalable products. So, Miloš, welcome to Chair. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, your company uh, is working for a long time now in service business, and mm-hmm. uh, you're doing product consulting mm-hmm. uh, uh, management, basically product conceptualization and uh, innovations in, in that yeah. area. Um, but besides that, you have some of your own products and I'm going to go back to that later. But first I want to ask you some question regarding the clients mm. and their expectations mm. uh, uh, when it comes to new products. If I'm asking these questions with that first idea that I throw out about disruption. Uh, what clients are expecting when, when they want to have new product uh, created? Yeah. Uh, Ooh, that's always a tough question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> the first one that, that we started yeah, yeah, yeah. today. So like they, they expect everything. Uh, no, but yeah, we positioned ourselves as uh, really a venture product studio and uh, uh, like someone who is a problem sol- solver, like someone who uh, works on uh, behavioral changing uh, solutions. Um, and uh, that that's how we try to like uh, talk with the right customers for us. But usually, like what the customers, you know, when they come, like they are especially you know, they are from a business background or something. They seen something, they want something similar. They seen a problem, but they you know they come and say, okay, you know, I want uh, Uber like service for uh, um, I don't know black community specifically, and like okay, you know, uh, can it be cheap and can you know can it be fast? Um, and uh, I, I would say like that are like usually the problems like people see something they think it's like now a commodity and they want to just to reapply it. And even if that's like the case, like with all of the development of the tools, no code, like other solutions out there, uh, it's um, still hard to understand your target market. Like what's like how, uh, what are their behaviors, like wh- what are they used to, what they do daily, uh, what is a real solution for them, like how would you impact their lives? Um, so yeah, like that's, uh, that's mo- most, uh, yeah, that, that's most what, uh, we like spend time, like analyzing with, with the clients and, uh, we try to eliminate like, uh, you know, their, uh, uh, focus points usually are, oh yeah, I want to develop this feature and this feature and this feature. And then we, you know, turn it back. Okay. But, uh, I like what it's like the outcome that it will be developed. Like, what do you want to achieve? So yeah, like that's, uh, that's our first introductory calls where we usually, I mean, I would say more, um, we ask about like, hey, did you think this through? Like, what are the next steps? Like, are we to find the right fit? Yeah. Uh, we are in similar businesses. Yeah. So we, we uh, uh, 
tackle similar problems yeah. and uh, I know that this is the first step to yeah. take, to to understand the cl- client to to educate your yeah. client and uh, give him e- expectations so that's the first step but after that it's a team right yeah. and uh, I want to ask you your experience regarding uh, uh, when we talk about innovative product design yeah how it's hard and what are the challenges to create a team and later on to lead yeah. it in that kind of yeah. Uh, uh, area? Yeah, the team is very, very important. And I think it's like a lot of the times it's very, it's kind of neglected. Like people uh, look at it, oh yeah, I want this role. And then like whoever can fulfill it, yeah, you know, it will create something. Uh, well, the reality is it will not. Um, you <laughs> have to you have to work with like with the team. You have to educate, and uh, this is like we spend a lot of time uh, uh, like in, internally in the company, like to uh, uh, create product-minded thinkers. Like uh, pro- like uh, uh, we call our engineers a product engineers, um, which is uh, I mean we try to describe it like by by just the term, uh, but really that's someone who always like will ask uh, questions. Okay, what's the outcome? Why? I'm working on this like what will happen like and then um, these kind of uh, questions and this kind of I would say education and like I'm steering towards can create better solutions at the end because someone uh, even like your engineers are not working on specific tasks they're thinking okay if, when I'm doing this like what will happen next like what uh, you know how this will grow okay if I or if I create a decision right now how that can impact like for the future. Um, well, yeah, the team uh, has to be like, you know, like it has to include like more people, like there have to be like more heads, like to understand uh, the problem at hand, to, to really try to work together uh, in, uh, in like in, in the innovation. Like, and uh, I have to say they have to be collocated, like, you know, people who talk like they have to be intensively talking, like uh, exchanging the energy, uh, you know, like triggering um, like users, talking with them uh, um, and then really sharing that in a very kind a closed setup like you know i mean it's it's been hard like with covid but yeah like that's yeah, uh, that was yeah, my question yeah, yeah, yeah. what about remote working yeah. right now yeah which is you know working but uh, not as effectively and not as um uh, I, I mean not, not as creatively as possible so we try to bridge that with uh, creative uh, in person sessions uh, uh, and then like a remote uh, like mo- mostly like the work let's move to innovation itself and uh, but that's in the product design and in its mm. core, it's innovation. Mm. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, uh, what is the beginning of innovation with this? Uh, how you uh, start to innovate uh, uh, in terms of product design? Mm. And uh, can you share with, with me what frameworks you guys use? So yeah, our framework would be probably the most similar to uh, Google Design Sprints uh, that they do. But uh, like, and I have to say, like, uh, to really create an innovation, you have to understand what are you solving, who is, who will be using it. So like, a significant time really is like spent. Uh, with the users mapping out their journeys, mapping out their thoughts, mapping out their daily activities, like where they go, what they do, uh, you know, what they do in life in general, and then what they do at the job they do. Um, and then like iteratively, then even working with them on analyzing and testing like the conceptually product ideas. So just to get the, the early, early feedback. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that really I mean helps at the end. Like and everybody uh, when you know when you map out all of this, like every stakeholder in every business, you know, starts to understand like all of the challenges, uh, and then even like you, you can easily you know drop someone's ideas of oh yeah like oh yeah I wanted that feature to I don't know glowing light in the corner because it's cool. Uh, instead, really focus on the problem. Then. So uh, from from your perspective, when you're leading team mm. uh, that uh, is doing innovation, uh, what is your decision making process? Uh, how you decide uh, where to go next, what to do next? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of listening, I have to say, like listening from uh, users, uh, listening to the metrics, listening uh, uh, the impressions from like uh, the team. Um, and uh, especially even like a customer support, customer success teams, um, j- just to uh, understand what's what are the you know challenges. Like u- usually, um, they're like always like some 
important stakeholder, someone who's decision maker. So you, you talk with them, uh, uh, you understand their problem and they have their own vision of some solution. And, you know, you, um, y- in a way, sometimes you have to go there. Like, you know, you have to ch- uh, test that. Like, so uh, uh, my approach is always like to ha- uh, cre- be lean as possible, not create uh, just enough to try to validate that. And then if it proves that it's used, uh, you know, go, go ahead with it. Um, I, I cannot say that, okay, this is like, oh yeah, definitely will solve uh, everything. Like, you know, we had uh, uh, like, a, you know, functionalities fully developed, like they were like, oh yeah, super psyched, you know, people were, uh, you know, using it for, you know, a few weeks, months, and then like slowly started, uh, you know, like, I would say evasion, like it was kind of a scheduler in a, in a medical institution. Um, because it became hard, it became hard for the nurses, like they had to do many things and uh, like slowly, uh, you know, and you know, you spend in a, like a lot of time on it. Uh, but it, it sounded really as a good idea. You spend a lot of time already like on with everybody, you know, like all of the key stakeholders, they're like, yeah, we need it, we need it on a monitor, we need everything. And then, okay, you know, you just have to, okay, say, okay, accept it, like push it aside. Uh, but what uh, I tend to do is like always like, okay, understand, now it's good to learn, okay, why that like uh, went to the slippery slope, okay, how we can improve it, you know, maybe some problems are okay, integrations, like, you know, maybe there are some windows to really focus on more and maybe even like bring a much bigger value for the business there. Uh, I will go back to the service business and yeah. uh, uh, I want to just jump to, to the part that because I know that you have your own products mm-hmm. and one of them is Lasso. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, can you explain me uh, how you came up with that product? Uh, yep. how, how, you, how you came to the idea first and uh, why you yep. pursued to develop it? Uh, so yeah, like it's kind of a long story. I'm a, a, a community builder, a conference organizer, event organizer, uh, uh, and uh, it really started everything around hospitality and uh, you know guest experience, which can be like attendees. Uh, and because of that, we went to uh, into a conference solution that uh, we run like right now for uh, four or five years. Uh, uh, and like it's like slowly expanded, but always like I was searching, okay, what's like, where's the biggest, uh, you know, chunk of uh, needs. Um, and at, uh, at one point we identified uh, uh, like hoteliers, like and their internal really event management because they are the biggest, like uh, they have their needs. Uh, you know, like people come in, you know, they book uh, rooms, they book uh, reservations, they book uh, conferencing and they're usually like they run with enterprises, like there are like many, many collocated uh, uh, conferences happening at one time. So that was kind of our entry and uh, like uh, the part of it like was uh, okay. Um, you know, there's, you know, guests do need stuff. We have operational headaches. We want, uh, we want it efficiently. Everything goes through uh, uh, the front desk. So like you have to call, you have to do everything. And we said, okay, you know, this is an hour guest experience. You can, uh, you know, request new towels, request uh, housekeeping, uh, order food, like, and uh, like limit the interaction that really goes like through a channels that are not um, traceable and that uh, really overload the front desk. Um, and yeah, that's that's how it started. Like that was like beginning of the 2020. I, I found a good partner in that, like a very experienced um, a hotelier, like someone like who's been in the industry. Uh, you know, everything uh, fit together. You know, we got like a, a few contracts in place, like for a large hotels, and you know, like um, and. Um, well, then COVID hit, so yeah, we yeah, had to that pivot. that was my question. <laughs> what happened with COVID? Because yeah. you just entered the market, totally a market that it's dead practically yeah. now. Yeah, so especially we entered the events market like first and then like guests uh, second because a lot of it we had already from uh, like a kind of uh, basics of these interactions we already had uh, developed over with the conferencing stuff. Uh, and yeah, like it happened that all contracts canceled. So uh, yeah, it was not uh, like, oh yeah, that's uh, too bad, <laughs> but simply, okay, there was no conference, you know, events, nothing, uh, nothing happened. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we, uh, the good thing is like, we kept a very good uh, uh, communication and like what COVID brought to us, like, and like, it's a good thing. Uh, you, from the COVID, you start, we started like to be able to get everybody's attention, like from uh, really from the top, from property managers, property owners, um, because they had more time. 
and that was great. So yeah, we ca we could like okay now uh, iterate of over of what this can be become like what are their biggest pains um, and in one part you know we demonstrated some uh, face ID matching you know validation that that's uh, this person coming in uh, yeah, integration into their property management systems and like uh, okay so what what uh, what this can do like so we went okay so there is a good uh, uh, chunk that now contactless is a big thing and we you know we had like yeah but we can really easily provide a solution for a contactless yeah. check-in you know go to your room and even like skip the front desk and maybe telecom uh, communicate with them um so yeah that that was like our uh, pivot that you know turned out okay you know slowly to uh, roll and you know we have now like customers and uh, yeah we are talking uh, with uh, uh like bigger chains that you know want to slow uh, roll it um, in the future and yeah like i mean it's it's interesting because usually you know we talk with the property owners and that's like uh, larger groups of hotels so like the yeah the the the, the solution can easily go to you know many many places at once yeah. Um, we met like I think three years ago, and something, uh, something like that. Mm. And uh, at that time, you you have been working in one specific area um, that was so hype uh, uh, then, and now it's completely changed. Mm. And I'm talking about the chatbots, mm -hmm. and uh, because it was so innovative and it was so hyped and now it's com on the completely uh, different side of the spectrum. Can you say, say to me, because it's, it is innovation and we are talking here about innovations, but it's in a problem now because of a uh, lot of things. I want to hear from your side and your perspective. Why is that? Why, what happened with the chatbots? Yeah. And yeah, very interesting story. Yeah. So uh, we entered the chatbots because we uh, believed in that like behavioral changing uh, um, uh, solutions. And like I would say the chatbot messaging is like one like a kind of an extension of our lives like so like that's how uh, how it started okay i can easily message i can talk with someone you know i talk in person i can talk on the phone and there were like platforms that uh, really uh, evolved into okay yeah, let's automate some of these discussions and let's help like ma basically make applications on these platforms um and that was cool but um like chatbots like they're like so big expectations out of them like because everybody came in there and said okay we are going to make an AI and everything will work and it will learn from every uh, for every topic possible uh, and uh, you know I have to say we have a really good domain specific uh, uh, automated conversation chatbot uh, solution for for instance conferencing um, and like activities around it but it really works because you you know understand the model you can easily say okay uh, find me talks about microservices on friday afternoon and you know it will pop up like uh, the right solution but you know then you know you ask them about some movie it's you know it's like unrealistic to expect that you can continue the conversation um, but people uh, really kind of you know because of all of the hype wanted that and then at some point you know like uh, with uh, even with the large uh, I mean like companies and vendors like they will say okay but there are no actually good implementations of that um, and kind of chatbot was like okay this is the thing that you know doesn't work most of the times and uh, again like we need to be redirected to our support or something so it kind of became a bad word but more they're like a different as well side of story like the biggest um um I would say like the platform for that like is a Facebook Messenger uh, kind of had its own like privacy challenges issues they were like cutting out they were changing their APIs you know like and then uh, that really led people out of it and there was no um, e like enough development like in more of educating uh, people how to access these chatbots how to access these conversational interfaces so and it become something that like it's not invested uh, like any like anymore. I mean, there is still, um, in a way, as to just uh, kind of wrap up. Like, I mean, I would say yeah, there are still a good. I mean, it's a good interface. It's like something that uh, you you know you have it in your phone. Uh, it's not something that you have to learn. Like, I'm you know talking with you instead of it, I pull up some business and say okay like with a hotel like okay when's the check-in oh per perfect like can i check in now yes okay how to do it click like click this link like click this link because you can do like there are rich messages like in this uh in this scenario uh so yeah we we still propagate it like I mean there is something about the voice interfaces like coming in uh uh but yeah like i still i think it didn't um 
uh, I mean, didn't achieve the hype it was uh, it was presented like a few years back. Yeah. So so yes, chatbots were uh, for a while uh, hyped, and uh, it uh, have it has been perceived as a future. But uh, as we see it now, because of those reasons that you told me, uh, uh, it's a question mark. It's going. Is it going to be a future again? But because of that, I want to go back to to uh, service business and uh, go back to our main subject of today uh, of uh, innovation in. Uh, uh, uh product design can you see uh what it's going in what it's going to evolve in the future from your perspective from your experience mm. what we can ex- expect from uh innovations in this area yeah uh well in general like what i'm very passionate about is like a kind of content personalization, which is not just now content. I mean, content personalization, you kind of have today. I mean, what you search on Google, YouTube, like wherever, like kind of it's personalized based on your uh, experience. I mean, you have like a business like trying to do that. Um, but I see like more and more in the application space, like uh, like uh, these tools uh, of uh, uh, kind of tracking and analyzing and uh, building user persona, like, uh, you know, sh- like will evolve, definitely will evolve. And, uh, you know, at some point should become a commodity. So like more and more, it will be access um, for people to build, uh, you know, different even user interfaces. I mean, you can think of, you know, uh, we are using the same application, but like the things that I see and the things you see are different. I mean, you you do achieve that with different roles, permissions and stuff, but that's not it. Like, you know, I mean, uh, I may be an, a, be- a beginning user. I have like a beginner friendly interface. Then I go to some advanced uh, functionalities as, as I explore that my interface can change. Um, conversational interfaces are a good example. Like, and uh, that's one of the pro- maybe failures. A lot of them, like a lot of the solutions that were out there uh, were simple like request response, like without the full context of me as a user. So like if I, uh, that was the problem. Like, uh, you know, if I come to uh, um, like, again, like conversational interface and uh, I don't know, ask like, um, uh, like, like I don't know, like, uh, did you rem- like, uh, how did you like the movie from yesterday or something like that? You know, if I don't have like a context, you know, like it would be okay, what movie? And then like again, uh, uh, questions. Um, so this personalization is, um, I think it's a big thing. Like, you know, I mean, you you kind of seen it like in every places people try to do it. Uh, even like automotive, you know, cars, you have like this seat when you sit, okay, now by the key detected, yeah, but that's minimal, you know, you think of it, okay, maybe how the whole dashboard, how it works, where your, you know, steering wheel, um, yeah, that's coming now, but like, uh, you know, maybe the performance setting, like how, you know, how aggressive, like all, all of the things that are possible even with the uh, electric cars and like, so uh, things like that are very exciting and in a way like, uh, uh, I think that there is a like I mean tremendous opportunity like of having that contextual uh, even service like that would just build out like all of that. Um, I, I kind of I do think that that's reserved for a big guys, but you know we'll we'll see like you know we, we like how how that will evolve. Yeah. And uh, what is your opinion about the process of uh, uh, itself about the innovation process? Mm-hmm. What what can we expect there? Uh, innovation, yeah, like that's, uh, um, well, I, I think that uh, first thing like is that uh, uh, more people uh, needs to understand like how innovation happens. That's like the first thing starts with uh, education. Um, uh, right now, I think that people are like, especially using our, I would say mostly digital solutions, but like people are enforced and then trained to use something because it's made like that. Um, and what needs to happen? Okay, so how do I make things that people will really enjoy and be like easy to use? Um, so I think that you know education needs to um, uh, needs to happen first for people, and then like the tools. Like okay, so how do I mean again falls back to this like contextual uh, tracking system that we will let and like let people try to use it, uh, and then based on that, like we have a. Uh, we have a good learning and uh, you know good ideas like what it can be uh, offered like you know with that all, all everything uh, I have to say like kind of starts with a good understanding and good you know analytics from you know some activity that's uh, being taken I mean there I have to say like there are good companies I mean that companies that do that really well now I mean like uh, social networks are a good example you know 
Facebook, like, you know, they, they literally know your opinion. Like, you know, they potentially can know uh, when will you go to buy ice cream. So like at, I don't know, 5 p.m. on Thursday, they will, like, can promote you on other time. I mean, that's, and that's what uh, we want to bring into every solution in a way, like that, that level of understanding. So uh, my last question of today is uh, where I can buy the, the T-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a limited series, like only uh, uh, only given to friends. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll get you some. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Thank you so much for yeah. part of in the chair and yeah. uh, for you out there. If you like today's episode, subscribe and see you next Thursday on some new innovations. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.